Today's video is about swedge lock. And today was a real world problem and we have real world solutions. All right, today got called to the top of the boiler. Uh, there's a transmitter box that was full of water and it's dripping. So I came up here, take a look. First thing, check the temperature. They're nice and cool, which means we don't have a leak down here. Uh, the pressure we have right now is over 1,200 pounds. That's really high pressure. And our temperature is... That's really hot. The water is coming out of the top one here. And that is the low pressure side of the orifice style flow. So it's the downstream side of the orifice plate. Also brought a temp gun. So the temperature inside this box is reading ambient temperature, which is good. That's what we would expect. So we follow this line up. And where it goes to is a condensing pot. Condensate pot that's used to protect a differential transmitter on HP steam line. But the first thing I noticed here, look at the condition of the casing on this. Right down there is the root valve. It's rating 193 degrees. And this one is rating basically ambient temperature with a little bit of temperature just coming off the pipes. So our leak is on the top side of the condensing pot because we're not losing water for our leg of our transmitter. So I cut the insulation back on our condensing pot. And you can see there's some steam wisping out on the top side of the condensing pot. So we're seeing as high as 215 degrees there. Now that's a small leak. As I look closer, and this is what I want to show you. This is swedge lock tubing, 3 8 inch. Look real close. Did you see that? Someone put Teflon tape on the swedge lock side, which prevents the swedge lock fitting from working correctly. So now what we have to do when we come offline is we're gonna have to take that fitting loose and we're gonna have to take the, the Teflon tape off and that should fix that problem. Hopefully it hasn't been going so long that it's cause damage to the tubing. If it's caused damage to the tubing, we'll have to cut the tubing off just a little bit and, and move the swedge lock down slightly and put a new pieces in it and put it back together. So for right now, I'm leaving that open so that way it's not continually dripping water down in the transmitter box and that way everything can dry back up. When the unit's offline, we will shut that valve. We'll check the pressure, make sure it goes to zero. We'll pull that fitting off and redo the fitting. All right, 
first we need to get us a piece of tubing to put in our fitting to get the proper connection. We don't need much since we're just doing this for uh, training. Take the switch lock cutter. Start spinning. After you spin a little bit, turn the knob. Just a little bit at a time. This is some of the components that you'll be using for doing tubing. You've got your cutter, you've got your swedge lock go no go gauge. The silver goop keeps the swedge lock fittings from galling. You've got your tubing bender. Uh, this is the ferrule set. This is the nut. This is a scriber, of course your tubing, and your wrench, which on the 3 Ace uses 11 sixteenths. Each swedge lock fitting has four pieces. You've got your body, you've got your nut, and when you take the nut off, there's a ferrule set there, and it's a two-piece ferrule set. I don't want to take that one off. So there's the ferrule set. You've got your two pieces. And there's the nut. All right, let's get started with the proper way to put one of these fittings together. We've got our fitting here and it's just sitting there snug. Here's our piece of tubing. By the way, tubing is measured from the outside, not the inside. So a three ace fitting is three eighths from the outside to the opposite side on the outside. Put that in the scriber. It's got an arrow telling you which direction to turn. Not much to it. All it does is it leaves that small Tiny spot, which I can't, I don't know if you can see that. Yes, right there. And if you run your finger across it, you can actually feel it. Put that in the fitting. Make sure it's bottomed out. You need to put just a dash of silver goop, which is made by Swedge Lock, and it prevents the stainless to stainless contact from galling. Okay, now you're just making sure that that's snug by hand. Put a mark. And on the three A's, you're supposed to do, and once it's snug by hand, you do a turn and a quarter. So you go around. There's one full turn. And a quarter. So we've come to right here. That's it. Now we're gonna use the go no go gauge. And it does not go in. If the go no go gauge goes in, that means you need to tighten it just a little bit more. Okay, the great thing about swedge lock fitting is they're re reusable over and over again. But there's a couple things that don't apply when you're reusing. The go no go gauge you no longer need. Also, the turn and a quarter is no longer needed because you've already got the ferrule seated. So when putting one back together, 
you go till it's snugged up and then just turn till it tightens up over and over for years to come that is good for many thousand pounds Did you notice what was not there? We need to do this again. What's not there is Teflon tape. There should never be Teflon tape on the threads of a swedge lock fitting. Swedge lock fittings are expensive, but they're excellent fittings. And if they're put on right, then they can be used time and time again. The trick is, do it right.